Hello everyone, welcome back. So I revived a human, that's all. Haven't done anything else since. So we're gonna take a take a little look around Dukes. I went to human so we can get invaded. Get a little invasion action going. But we're gonna take a little poke around, and just get some of the stuff, explore Dukes a little bit. I would go kill Seif because you don't need to free a Big Hat Logan. As long as you can kill Seif before doing so, a Big Hat will end up freeing himself. So that might be the easiest way if you're not interested in the Firekeeper soul that's in Big Hat's uh, cell. Which I'll probably get after killing Seath because the uh, the key to it is uh, right in here yeah so you might think that going to Seath and getting killed and going to prison would be quicker but it's not because you have to go all the way here get the king go back this way it's a one-way trip now here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a shot at getting um, the symbol of avarice because this is a mimic as you can tell by the chain we'll pick up his free goodie what? <laughs> what? well what? holy shit no way you're kidding me what? that's like one of the rarest drops in the game I just got it on my first try I swear I haven't I haven't cheated this in any way. No way. That's <laughs> that's absolutely insane. What's the description on this? I've never read it. Monster head resembling a treasure ch uh, treasure chest. Once an ancient god, it is said this is the symbol of shame imposed on a long lost clan, exiled for the sin of avarice. Hmm. Wearing the slightly raises soul absorption and item discovery, but also affects its wearer with the curse of the branded, which means your health slowly drains. So I'll throw it on real quick. You can see what it looks like. Absolutely ridiculous. You can see my health slowly draining there. So it is... But I mean, if you look at my item find... Item discovery is at 300, and we don't even have any humanity on us and um, if we did have humanity that would raise it up to 400 so without it oh you know what I, you know I thought that was a little low as I was talking about it it um, I guess it's not listed apparently that should have gone up while I was wearing it but it didn't so I, maybe it just uh, doesn't list the effect so that's interesting. But it's good if you're running through maybe maybe the swamp, you're farming large shards, farming anything. You can just put it on for a nice burst of farming speed. You can combine it also with the uh, silver serpent ring that increases your soul, uh, soul find by 20% and it will stack. So I'm pretty sure what the symbol of avarice is doing when I put it on is taking 300 and increasing it by 20%. So pretty awesome. And so of course that works with the, um, the soul find too. Come back here. These guys do a good damage, a good amount of damage to me. I really don't like Dukes. These guys don't even bleed, so I don't have that going for me either. But yeah, in the early days on my first playthrough, I died a lot here. Oh.
I don't like these archers. Not one bit. Oh, that's interesting. Is that a shortcut that needs to be opened? I didn't even know. There's just so much stuff coming at you right here. Barely dodge that. Just a lot of enemies and... crap everywhere. I knew he was coming up. I was hoping I could be a boss and time that. Ah! Oh, he's buffed! That's why I did so much damage. Boo. So, you... You can see why I hate Dukes. I think we'd be better off invading here. Um, which, of course, we have to be in human form to do that, too. And you know, actually, there's there's nothing that amazing in Dukes. Honestly, on most characters, you could skip it. I mean, the the best thing in here really is um, some Twinkling Titanite. Like, just look at all these arrows and just crap coming at me. Teleport, that's so annoying. But we'll head down in the prison and get some of the stuff. Well, that doesn't kill him, that's a shame. Sorceries. Fortunately, these guys are poisonous. Like, as we've been discovering, many enemies in the game. Hmm. Well. Interesting. Very interesting. Because now I'm questioning whether or not I can actually get in there at all. Which is fine if not. But I feel dumb not knowing that. There's uh, an Orlando below. Grave Lorded, didn't even know it. That'll happen as. I mean. <laughs> Grave Lords. Grave Lords. I wish Grave Lords weren't so broken. It's a cool idea, but it's so pointless. Like, it's not fun being a Grave Lord, because you don't know when people die to your red phantoms. There's no credit for it. Uh, 
Oh yes, I remember. I remember the, some of the stuff in here. <laughs> Get delivered right to him. He's just like an archer here, so you deal with him, but all the while there's like another archer down there that'll start firing at you. I think, I think there is a chest over here, which might be a mimic. No, it's a level down. Here we have strong magic shield. So this is, is something nice if you um, want this, maybe for four kings. You can pick that up on the top level where the um, this caster dude is. You know what? Let's <laughs> let's learn their name once and for all here, because I always forget it. Channelers, that's the one. So up where this the channel the channeler normally is on the top, that's where you can find it. Now I want to see if I can get down to the lower levels. It really doesn't look like I can. Yeah, you know, I, I take the shortcut so much, I kind of forget things like opening that shortcut back there behind me. So, you know what? Rather than kind of mess around in here, let's, uh, let's go take out Seath real quick and then get maybe some more uh, PvP action in. deal with I mean these should break right am I am I just dumb do you need a fast roll for this I could have sworn those break normally okay can we level probably not no Leveling requirements are pretty steep these days. So since we'll be fighting Seath, and since Seath does not bleed, uh, to my knowledge he does not bleed, we're going to want to buff our base damage with uh, power within. So we will head down there. I can't believe I found that symbol of avarice <laughs> on my first try with no humanity without the the gold serpent ring. That was just beyond lucky. Like <laughs> the drop chance for that is so minuscule. I don't think anyone's even figured out a percentage. Now, I do want Seath's tail, and that's the hardest part. That makes Seath, like, just three times harder to beat. It is very tricky to get his tail. Unless you have a very high damage weapon. Take a little secret path. It's 
a soul over here? Nope, or humanity. I've never actually tried hurting these moonlight butterflies, but I believe they will engage you in the same way the other butterfly does. We'll try that on the way out. Try to walk on the left side of that crystal, because you can slide off. For getting across these, I always just look for this little nub, the pointy bit, and just run at that. I might have want, wanted to get the curse bite ring or the uh, the antiquated set, but honestly, I'm not really worried about it. It's kind of cool how Seath is, I think, the only boss that doesn't have a fog gate. At least not to start with. And actually, let's pop at least one humanity. Because we can always pick that up if we die. I should have put power within on... And my running just then was a little late. Clam. Clams! That's another danger as well. The clams will follow you in the first time. Getting his tail is going to be hard at this point. So I want to test just how much damage we do. Oh, oh that's, that's not bad at all. I can work with that. Get out of my face, clam. Probably should have killed the clams. Yeah, his tail's just so hard to get. So I kind of missed my shot there, and the clams are here. I'm actually just going to homeward bone out instead of risking getting cursed. I'll be back in a sec. Alright, back. So, um... Obviously the trick here is to get Seath to attack his own crystal. I don't know why they... <laughs> I don't know why he's playing around over there. And that frame loss with those crystals. I don't know if we'll even hit it at this range. No. Wait, yes? Oh no, looks like it didn't... Oh, he didn't break it, it wasn't hurting him. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Come on, Seath. That's weird how his tail did stay there for so long despite him not having broken the crystal. at a bad angle.
Yeah, there we go. So it doesn't really take much. You want to aim at the spot where the crystals stop on his tail. There or further, but obviously you want to go for the quickest point. And other than that, for fighting him, if he spins his head around like that... Oh, yeah. Well, if he spins his head around like that, um, die in a mess of crystals. Usually that attack... Hmm. I would normally expect that to go out further. Usually he does a circle around him. But whatever, we had that humanity, we didn't get cursed, so it's all good. Again, with the Gravelord. Someone's doing some serious Gravelording around here. I haven't even noticed a single red phantom yet. Alright. Now, I did pick up a, um... A, a curse breaking item, purging stone. So I do have one in case that does happen. But what I'll usually do is I'll just uh, beat on his uh, tentacle over here. Didn't he hit it? Yeah. I'll just beat on his tentacle and just try to keep an eye on what his, um, on what his, uh, graph is doing. See, but you can see a lot of his, a lot of his attacks are his melee when you stay at this range. And so you can kind of bait him into that. Seath is weak to lightning, and he resists against magic, which is why I'm not playing around with the Moonlight Butterfly Spear. But yeah, not a hard boss to just straight up kill. See, if you stay here, most of, most of his attacks go forward. Just stay kind of right... right near that second little crystal on his tail. Heal up a bit. See, so, I mean, he... He's not even hitting me. He's doing his melee. Just do this little little circular waltz. Come on, attack me. Get out of the way! Woo! That was close, actually. Those tail slams will do nasty things to you. Yeah, there's the big circular one. Oh, shit. Yeah, that circular one he just did, that's when you want to get close. more melee and he is done see you later crystal lord a 
you go. So, not a hard boss. Didn't even have a lot of trouble getting his tail. Thanks to power within and taking advantage of his um, lightning weakness. So, now that he's dead, I'm going to warp out of here. I can come back for like a blue slab. But... I want to make sure I keep my souls so I can pay a visit to good old Big Hat Logan, who has now freed himself. So all we need to do is run over here, and I don't think I'll actually be here just yet, but um, we'll exit and come back and he should be here. Hmm, okay, so he's not, he's not here just yet. I know he will free himself. Assuming he did come here, which he should have. I'm going to check out Firelink to make sure he's not there. Because going to Dukes should automatically trigger his capture. No. Unusual. Oh, hello. I appreciate that one, sir. Hmm? Hello there. I thought, so have you come to... It's possible you might need to buy all of his spells, actually. Let me look this up. One sec. Alright. I'm actually kind of running out of ideas here. I may have screwed up pretty bad. Um, so I'm actually going to buy out all his stuff. In case that is also a trigger for him leaving. I too will leave soon. Ah! Good. You have great potential. Good, 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 good. Alright, I was getting a little worried there, but with that dialogue, we should be okay. So, I don't think he'll be there yet. I think we will have to do that restart. But after that, he should be here. Shit. All right, now that shortcut is open now. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Sequence breaking has obviously done some strange things to this level. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to where Seath is normally uh, when you first meet him. I'm going to go to where he normally is. Come on. He keeps twitching. I think he's going to attack, but he doesn't. This guy drop anything? I don't think so. No. Alright, I mean, games work off triggers. You go to an area, you trigger something. You know, it's triggered by accessing a place. Many things are. Like, you hit a physical spot on the world that the designers designated to be the spot for that thing to happen. I believe there's a blue chunk in here, or a blue, uh... Oh, that's the magic ember, that's right. Well, this is interesting. I never really looked around in here. Can you go up these stairs? Interesting. Is that a shiny? Ah, 
a shiny I've never gotten before. Soul of a great hero. Ooh, that's awesome. Huh. How about that? Never been up here before. Always learning something new with Dark Souls. Very cool. I wonder what happens if you go up there during the first Seath encounter. Hmm. Alright, so I'm thinking now that I've been through this area, it's probably triggered Big Hat's move to the cell, and then it's going to do a check for whether or not Seath is alive. And it's going to see that he's not, and then move him to the little library. Just trying to figure this out here, because this will be good info for all, all you other um, sorcerer sequence breakers out there. Oh! Oh, snap! Alright, so here's a lesson for you sequence breakers out there like myself. I had no idea, I completely forgot that the key to this door is actually in here. Normally you'd think that would make it so that taking the shortcut would completely cut off this area. However, Somewhere in the process of going to Firelink and coming back here and running around, it opened all the doors. Like I commented before, I thought it was kind of strange that shortcut was open. This door's open, too. And the trigger for Big Hat Logan moving is visiting his empty cell, if you have killed Seath. So how about this? This is something. Ha! Maybe I shouldn't have gotten that. Yep. Backstab, backstab, backstab. I don't like these squid guys, but they're not that bad either. These guys drop really good humanity as well, so if you're not at the DLC yet, you can farm some humanity here. If you, for example, put on the gold serpent ring and the symbol of avarice. These guys are like two health away from being dead after getting hit with those. Another point in intelligence that would kill them, I'm sure. At least fighting these guys this way, we don't have to fight them all at once. Like we would if the bell wasn't rung, or the siren wasn't sounded, or whatever it is. The creepy sound. Ow. Got 17 flasks left since we visited Firelink. Might as well use a couple. Alright, small group down here.
Again, more poisonous enemies. So, not so bad. There's a couple more loners in here. Get back here. Yeah, so that must be a humanity that it dropped. Oh, and oh, these guys dropped those miracles. Oh, that's interesting. Open the cell. This is for sure to trigger Big Hat. And we'll get the Firekeeper soul as well. Get our flask up to plus four, which will certainly heal us all the way, even from uh, one health. How about we turn off this annoying alarm, too? I think you can actually get these guys to come down to you if you hit these. Let's test it out. I know I've had them come down once before. I'm not exactly sure what aggro's them, though. Oh, well. Those guys are really easy to backstab after the, uh, the fight attack they do. Alright, turn this thing off, jeez. Ooh, is this a flamberge? Yeah. I recouped the souls I spent um, buying all the stuff from Big Hat, too. All right, with that triggered, let's uh, let's home the bone out of here, and hopefully, finally, he might not be gone yet. Might need to reload, but no, he's gone. Yay! We recovered from our our conniving sequence-breaking ways. Take that, prison sufferers. I figured it out. Through the power of luck, I figured it out all by myself. And here he is, our reward for all that effort. Gonna teach us how to be immortal. So, a flippin' expensive spell. Um, we'll get this. Don't quite have enough for homing crystal soul mass. However, I'm going to use a uh, soul of a hero. That'll get us up. And there we are. Crystal magic weapon I kind of also want, but we'll save that for another time. I don't want to burn any more of my souls. Now, homing crystal soul mass. I'm not sure if we have enough intelligence. We might. I want to count on it. Let's check it out. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Awesome. And how many does it give us? Four. Awesome. So this is going to be a huge asset to us in PvP. Because these do crazy as heck damage. Like, let's test it out. Uh, don't shoot that guy. <laughs> Alright. Let's get this guy around here. So these will fire while you're rolling. You can cast them and then kind of forget about them and they'll attack the first thing you encounter. 
Super good. This guy's making a fool of me. Double kill. Oh, I don't want a homeward bone. Alright, guys. So, gonna call it here. We beat Seath. We did some fiddling around with sequence breaking in Duke's archives, which was almost super hazardous. We almost was going to have a lot of trouble getting those crystal soul spears and a homing crystal soul mass because um, I would have had to edit the key in, which I would have done for this playthrough so I wouldn't have to start all over. Um, I was so excited to show you guys that shortcut. I totally forgot about the, the, <laughs> the risky run. But uh, there you go. So next up, we'll pick up right here, do some invading, I think. That should be fun um, now that we have these soul masses as well. That would be a good asset. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.